Good evening, everybody. Rob Desai here with the Tropical Weather Update for Tuesday, October 9, 2018. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Of course, we have a now major Hurricane Michael, actually, Category 3 hurricane as of the 5 p.m. advisory and is rapidly approaching the Florida panhandle. Um, the time to prepare has basically ended. The window of, of, to, of preparation has shut as the effects of Michael are beginning to spread throughout the Florida coast. Um, we also have still tropical storm Leslie persistent uh, throughout the central, uh, in the central Atlantic. And we have another disturbance that will be forming uh, in about five days. And also off the stream, we do have newly formed tropical storm Nadine. In the East Pacific, we do have uh, Hurricane Sergio. And if you look at the five-day cone, you can see there is a new disturbance that um, will be forming in the Caribbean, a 20% chance of development throughout five days. Uh, and hopefully it does not take a similar path to Michael did. Hopefully it does not, um, not same intensity as well, because that would be a uh, one-two punch basically for Florida. And that would be an awful situation, definitely. Uh, we also have Tropical Storm Nadine, uh, which is a 40 mile an hour tropical storm. Uh, and it's forecast to basically just uh, head northwest and it's actually forecast to dissipate within a few days. So it shouldn't be uh, a concern to anybody, which is some great news. And looking in the west, um, the east or the east Pacific, rather, we do have Hurricane Sergio, uh, which is now a Category 1 um, with winds of about 85 miles an hour. And it's looking very disorganized now on satellite imagery. It is starting to weaken, uh, but it is forecast to maintain much of its strength. If we look at the projected path, you can see it is forecast to still remain a tropical storm, moderate tropical storm, as it does make landfall on the Baja California Peninsula of Mexico. Uh, and then, however, it does, as it does that further, and then will, of course, start to weaken uh, once it does so. But it will be bringing some heavy rain and gusty winds to the Baja Peninsula. Uh, and then we have, of course, Tropical Storm Leslie winds of 65 miles an hour, or 70 miles per hour, actually, um, as of the 5 p.m. advisory. Uh, it's continuing to just meander, heading south uh, in the Atlantic. And this is a very long-lasting storm. It's been almost two or more, more than two weeks now, actually, since it formed and it's still hanging around. And it is forecast to hang around for the next five days. As you can see, it's actually forecast to become a hurricane once again. Uh, and then it will weaken back to a tropical storm in five days, but then it will still be hanging around as it approaches the uh, West African coast, actually. Uh, but then it is forecast to start heading south and possibly west again. It still could be sticking around for a long time. Um, but it does not look like it will be any um, bring any land impacts, which is definitely good news. However, what will be bringing impacts to land and will bring impacts very shortly is, of course, the main story, which is Category 3 Hurricane Michael with max sustained winds of 120 miles an hour uh, as of the 5 p.m. latest advisory uh, and also has a pressure of 957 millibars, which is dropping quite rapidly. Uh, and as predicted, it has gone under that rapid intensification as it has headed further north into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and is under some ideal conditions that have some very warm waters and the wind shear is not that ideal. If you look at the wind shear map, you can see that the wind shear uh, right around the center of Michael is around 25 knots, uh, which is um, pretty unfavorable for cyclone development. However, against uh, those odds, Michael has still been able to strengthen um, and it probably would have strengthened further if it did have favorable wind shear, but at least it has not um, been under those conditions, otherwise you could be seeing Category 4 or even a Category 5. But even without that, there's still the potential for a Category 4 storm. Uh, if you look at Michael at the moment on the satellite, you can see that it's trying to form an eye here uh, in the center of the storm. Uh, it's been trying to do that for the past day or so, actually. <clears throat> um, however, it has not been able to just yet, as there is some dry air still impacting the system. Um, but it does look like an eye is probably going to form sometime uh, this night, a very clear eye. Uh, and once that eye does clear out, uh, it's definitely going to be start uh, intensifying even further. Uh, and that's why it could even become a Category 4 uh, just before it does make landfall. Now, if we look at the uh, projected path over the next several days, you can see that they do have, um, or this is the old track. If you update that, you can see uh, they do have a major hurricane still at landfall. Uh, the NHC has a Category 3, and you can also see uh, there are these hurricane warnings up from the Alabama coast all the way throughout the whole Florida panhandle. Um, and then south of that, there are some tropical storm warnings and watches 
for the Tampa Bay region. Uh, there's also a tropical storm watch for the coast of Mississippi and tropical storm warning for the western part of the coast of Alabama. And there also are now tropical storm warnings for the Georgia and South Carolina coast and tropical storm watches for the North Carolina coast as there could be some tropical storm winds in that region too. And uh, if we do look at the forecast discussion, you can see we do have a 125 mile an hour storm uh, at landfall. That is what the National Hurricane Center is predicting. Uh, so it's definitely going to be a very bad situation uh, for the Florida Panhandle. Uh, and I hope that everyone has prepared or evacuated as instructed. Uh, and if we look at now the storm surge, uh, we do have storm surge warnings and watches. We have storm surge warning all the way from Panama City, Florida uh, to near the Tampa Bay region. Also a storm surge watch from Pensacola to St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, and there could be some pretty high storm surge. Looking at the potential flooding from the storm surge, for the Apalachicola Bay of Florida. Uh, we do have potential for over nine feet of storm surge for this area and other, even other areas well away from the system there's storm surge for a potential of at least three to six feet of storm surge. Uh, so there's definitely going to be a lot of storm surge associated with this system. And also for the rainfall forecast, we have quite a bit of rain also will be associated with Michael. Uh, Michael will be dumping, um, it looks like about six to ten inches of rain as forecasted by National Hurricane Center for the landfall zone, uh, even for areas further inland into even the middle of Georgia, and even areas of inland South Carolina and North Carolina could be seeing six plus inches of rain, and surrounding areas could be seeing up to four to six inches of rain as well. So it won't be as much of a rainmaker as a system like Florence. Uh, since it will be moving relatively quickly, that's basically the only good thing associated with the system right now, um, but it will still be dumping quite a bit of rain, uh, and it will be heavy, definitely some heavy rain involved. And also there will be, of course, the wind threat. We look at the tropical storm wind force, uh, wind speed probabilities. You can see that much of the, basically all the Florida Panhandle is actually under 100% chance of seeing tropical storm winds. And areas of the Carolinas are also under a high chance, 78% chance of seeing uh, tropical storm force winds. And looking at the 50 knot, 58 mile an hour wind speed probabilities, um, the Apalachicola Bay up through Panama City has a 100% chance of seeing those 58. Uh, not wind or 50 knot winds rather uh, wind speed and if we look at the hurricane force winds probabilities uh, for the landfall area which is predicted to be uh, right west of the Apalachicola Bay just between Panama City and the Apalachicola Bay of the Florida Panhandle the area is expected to have basically a 90% chance of seeing uh, tropical or not tropical hurricane force winds rather uh, so it's going to be a wind maker a rain maker and a storm surge maker, so all of the dangerous impacts of a strong system, a strong hurricane, will be felt through the Florida Panhandle region. Now looking at the track models guidance from the, um, the herd of forecasting models, you can see that they are, are in agreement basically with the path of Michael uh, forecasting it to make landfall um, between Panama City and the Apalachicola Bay region. Then it will be moving through inland parts of Georgia and the Carolinas for exiting through around the Virginia Beach region. Uh, and then it will be heading out through the North Atlantic Sea as a powerful extratropical cyclone, but then it should not be impacting land anymore, which is good. And if you look at the intensity forecast, you can see that some of the models now do have Michael uh, actually peeing at a Category 4 hurricane. Uh, so there's definitely the possibility that it could still do that as uh, Category 4 does start at 129 plus mile an hour winds. Uh, so it is only t about 10 miles an hour from that. So if it, can, it continues too string, it does have about another um, 16 to 20 hours over the open warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. So there's definitely a potential that could still strain through a Category 4, but even if it doesn't, Category 3 hurricane is still definitely very serious. Uh, definitely a very serious situation for the Florida coast. Uh, and I hope that everyone is will be staying safe and is prepared. And if we look now at the computer models, you can see the forecast for Michael and also for the rest of the region on the European Model 12C run. Uh, you can see that it does have Michael coming ashore as a powerful Category 3 hurricane on the Florida Panhandle. And then it does have it moving through Georgia and the Carolinas before exiting. Uh, and then also you can see uh, it does have a low pressure forming in the Caribbean at day five. Uh, that would be the disturbance that is forecasted to develop in that region over the next few days. And at the GFS model, if we look at that, the 18Z run, you can see it has a similar situation. It has Michael making landfall 
uh, the same exact location as the European does. It does have a stronger system, however. Uh, and then, of course, the remnants of Michael uh, will be moving through the Carolina region and then does have a low pressure forming uh, around day five in the Western Caribbean Sea. The FV3GFS model shows a similar situation. Uh, has a weaker storm actually um, with Michael for Florida. It has a 959 millibar pressure, but that still would be at least a um, strong category two hurricane. Uh, and then it will be, of course, moving through the Carolina region. And then it does have the low pressure forming in the Caribbean at day five. So it does look like all the models are in agreement with the track of Michael. The intensity forecast is still, there's still some disagreement with that. But at the very least, it will be probably a strong category two hurricane at landfall. And we can also look at the precipitation uh, forecast from the GFS model. Uh, you can see that does forecast Michael to be dumping a good six to eight uh, inches, even some areas of nine to 10 inches uh, in the Florida Panhandle region. And even areas further inland will be seeing quite a bit of rain from this. Um, there's a pocket in North Carolina where it does show about six to seven inches of rain. And even some areas of Virginia and the Del Marva Peninsula could be seeing um, three to five inches of rain. Uh, so this definitely is going to be a very serious storm. And I hope everyone is taking the storm seriously. And I hope that everyone is staying safe. Thanks for watching and I'll have another update later tonight.